Welcome, so glad to have you as we continue this series that we started on divine healing. And we have been uh, talking about the source of sickness. And so I uh, wanted to have this for you in the playlist. And I want you to be able to go through this playlist, one teaching right after the other. They're going to build on each other, going to help you grow in your faith. And we want to see you received from God. So we've been talking about sickness and disease are not from God, that God doesn't send sickness and disease. I want you to turn with me, Acts chapter 10, verse 38 today. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. And this has been one of our hallmark scriptures during this series, and we're going to continue to refer to this. And I want you to get a revelation of this, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing. So God's a good God and, and healing comes from God. All who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So God did not send the sickness and disease, but he sent Jesus so that we might be delivered from sickness and disease. And so We've talked about there's a lot of unscriptural teaching in the body of Christ today that we have to address, and uh, we'll be talking about some of that. But, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people teach that God is being glorified through their pain and suffering through sickness and disease, or that sickness is always a result of sin in someone else's life. You know, there's just the pendulum can swing from one side to the other so many times, and really we need to find the balance of truth in the word of God. You know, Job, Satan actually afflicted Job's body. In Job chapter two, verse seven, and you can turn over there, and Job actually shares that what he says, what I was greatly afraid of came, on, came uh, unto me, and we know this, fear opens the door to the enemy every single time. And uh, notice this, Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the soles of his feet unto his crown. So um, Job was not a new covenant man. He was under the captivity of Satan. He was, Satan is the God of this world, the Bible says. So legally, Satan already had a legal right to Job. God, through his grace, had hedged Job uh, through protection, but, but Job was already in the hand of Satan. And so it's important to note, note this. God didn't send the sickness and that this was before the new covenant. And so we're so thankful that Jesus came and he broke the curse of sin and gave us authority over the enemy. And then when you read in Job chapter 42, verse 10, at the end of the book of Job, the Bible says that God turned the captivity of Job. The Bible actually refers to Job's situation as captivity, not as a blessing uh, but as captivity, which means bondage, it's sickness and pain that Satan had inflicted upon Job and God healed him and he delivered him from the captivity of Satan. So God calls, in his word, he calls sickness captivity. And again, the source of, of it here was Satan. So we see this, uh, that it's not God's will for his kids to suffer with disease. T.L. Osborne said, disease and sickness are never the will of the Father, but to believe that they are is to be deceived by the adversary. And so we know through the man's fall that sin entered the world and the curse came because of sin. And so we recognize this, that sometimes through sinful choices, the door can be opened that sickness can come upon us because of of sin, so there are instances of that, but it's not every single time someone gets sick that it's because of sin either. There are very godly, wonderful people who serve the Lord and full of faith that the enemy may attack them. And there's, we're gonna talk about some other reasons, but uh, in John chapter nine, verse one and three, and you can turn there, uh, Jesus saw the disciples, there was a man that was born blind from his birth and the disciples said, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but it happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. So we see every time we need to be sensitive, when we see people that are oppressed and suffering, uh, that we need to see an opportunity for the power of God to be made manifest. Amen. 
So Jesus healed this man. So uh, there are some people that are sick. There may be unconfessed sin, unrepentant sin in their lives. And so if there's unresolved anger, hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, lust, things like that that are unconfessed and harbored, and, but, but here's what's powerful. And James 5, 16 says that we confess our sins one to another that we may be healed. But here's what's awesome about the grace of God, the goodness of God. When we confess that and allow Christ to cleanse us from that, that open door is closed. Uh, and when we confess these things and get rid of them, we're, we can be healed. And that's just so wonderful to know. So also here's another uh, result of why we see sickness is from violating the natural laws of God. God put natural laws into this earth. I want you to look at Galatians chapter six with me. Galatians, the sixth chapter. And there's a powerful principle here. And uh, look at verse seven, Galatians six, seven. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatever man sows, he shall also reap. He that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So, you know, there's just some sicknesses that can result when we violate the natural laws of God, improper diet, uh, overweight, underweight, uh, overworking, you know, uh, running your body down, your immune system down, improper rest. Maybe there's a lack of self-control, things that bring stress-related illnesses on. Uh, and, and I've heard a statistic yesterday, and, and I would have to verify this, that 50% of the illnesses that are in hospitals, much of it has to do uh, with diet and what, what we're eating and what we're consuming, exercise too much or too little, abuse of drugs, tap, tobacco, alcohol, toxic chemical substances. So uh, there are a majority of sicknesses. It's a natural reason prevalent because of a failure to follow basic guidelines of nutrition. And of course, we live in a fallen planet and we know that there are things that are toxic to our body, chemicals now in our day and time that we are exposed to that can cause us to be sicknesses. So uh, we, we have to understand that not everything is the enemy. Not everything is a result of sin. It's, it could be a natural uh, cause. And so that being said, there are times we see in God's word where Jesus dealt with sickness that it was the direct result of oppressing spirits. Jesus' ministry of healing, uh, there was evidence that there was a direct result. And so he dealt with it. He recognized it as the work of Satan. Look at Luke chapter 13. Turn over there with me. And I hope that you're being blessed by this. This is encouraging you and helping you to see that our answer is always in the word of God. God wants us to live and walk in victory and uh, that uh, we can fight every time. Don't be condemned. If you're battling in your body, if you're dealing with a sickness or a disease, please do not receive this teaching as if you are condemned or you are less than because you're not walking in it. This is to help lift you raise you, to see you walk in victory. We want to contend and believe with you until we see the manifestation of healing in your body, whatever that may, whatever that may be. And so we see in Luke chapter 13, there was a woman bowed over who couldn't straighten up. And the Bible actually says here that she was, had a spirit of infirmity, verse 11. And so, uh, they did not medically, you would not see this as the source being a demonic spirit, but the word says that her condition was a result of spirit of infirmity. So we can see here, this condition is not being called a blessing from God, is it? And uh, absolutely not. Uh, and so pain and sickness, disease that are part of the curse that Satan brings against God's children are illegal. He's trespassing. We've got to stand against it, take our stand, resist it, not embrace it or accept it. But notice this, uh, and Jesus stopped what he was doing. He called her. See, Jesus spoke with power and authority. Woman, you're loosed from your infirmity. He laid his hands on her and instantly she was made straight. She was not demon possessed, but a spirit of infirmity was inflicting her body for 18 years. Jesus touched her. 
and he set her free. And that's why it's wrong for any government, anybody to tell the church that they can't meet, that you can't sing, that you can't take communion, that you can't lay hands on the sick. They're in violation of the word of God. And we're going to take our stand and and we're going to do what the word says to do. So Jesus never said, oh, this is my loving father. He's teaching her. He's perfecting her. He sent this affliction. No, God does not bind people. God looses people. Jesus said here, and he noticed, noticed that he said uh, in verse 16, ought not this woman, she's a daughter of Abraham in relationship with the Lord. Uh, be loosed from this bond. And he said, whom Satan has bound. Notice the words of Jesus. We know the will of God. The word of God is the will of God. Jesus was the perfect will of God in action. And that's how we receive. And so notice this bondage is never the will of God. He, Jesus came to set at liberty them that are bruised and destroy the works of the devil, redeem mankind and break the curse so notice this, write this down, say this with me. Satan is the oppressor. Jesus is the liberator. Satan is the oppressor, but Jesus is the liberator. So Jesus healed all that were oppressed of the devil, Acts 10, 38. And so Satan wants to afflict and ravage and torment the people. He's the oppressor. And so Jesus didn't just deal with symptoms. He spoke to the root of it. Uh, and whether it was a natural thing or he commanded the spirits oppressing people to leave. So notice the man that was born blind, he actually took mud and rubbed it into his eyes and God created eyeballs that this man didn't have. It was not a spirit of infirmity, but just a natural cause genetically of why he was born without eyesight and God, Jesus created eyes for this man. But for this lady, he spoke to a spirit of infirmity. Notice Matthew chapter 12. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb. He healed him and he spoke and saw. So he was able to speak. Notice how Jesus dealt with it. And Matthew 9, they went out and behold, they brought to him a mute man possessed with the devil. The devil was cast out and he spoke and they marveled. It was never so seen in Israel. See miracles a test of the glory of God. It's the miracles, signs, wonders, and healings that gives glory to God. Notice Mark 9. There was a deaf and bunt, dumb boy that couldn't speak when the, the King James uses that terminology. That's what it means. And they were, weren't able to cast the evil spirit that had him bound. He rebuked the foul spirit. You dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you. I command you. I, took a, I, take, I come out of him and enter no more into him. And he took him by the hand, lifted him up, and he arose. So Jesus uh, rebuked this, commanded it to come out, and he was totally set free. Notice another instance in Luke chapter 4 that Peter's mother-in-law, sick with the fever, they brought to him, and he ministered to her, and he stood over her, and he rebuked the fever, and it left her. So see, I rebuke, we, when we pray, we rebuke viruses, we rebuke infirmities, we rebuke illness. Just like Jesus spoke to the mountain, he spoke to the fig tree, we need to speak to that sickness and take authority over it. We haven't believed that we've had authority, but we need to rise up in who we are in Christ, our identity in him, and take that place of authority. And so Jesus rebuked. He didn't hesitate and notice Jesus did not pray. He didn't ask God. He commanded, he spoke to it, and, and he didn't pray at all. He recognized the work of Satan. He took his place of power and authority over sickness and disease and spoke to it, and he rebuked. That word, the rebuke from the Greek means to stop. So it had to obey. It had to go, and that fever left, and when it did, she got up and went to minister to it, and she is in the south in Texas today, she would have got up and made biscuits and gravy, bacon and eggs. Come on, somebody. Amen. So the evil spirit left, that fever left. So notice this, cast uh, a, a, a man who's a powerful man of God, T.L. Lowry, was a man that we had at Harvest Family and a powerful influence on my life. And he prayed for me. And I said, Brother Lowry, pray, I want you to lay your hands on me and pray for me. I want to see God perform the miracles and the healings that sh to what you saw in your lifetime. 
and we're hungry for this. And he told about a young man that was born deaf and dumb in uh, Jamaica in the West Indies. And he was 26. He'd never even heard a sound or spoke a word in his life. And they prayed for him. He said, we took, a domin we took dominion and authority over that, those spirits and they were broken and God worked a miracle. He could hear, he could talk. He talked about another young man that he prayed for that had to wear glasses so thick uh, to even just try to see, came into the prayer line and he said that about 40 feet from where they were standing, there was a clock. And so he asked him if he could see what time it was after he received prayer and he could, or excuse me, before he received prayer, and he couldn't tell what time it was, so they prayed. The Spirit of God, he said, prayed through me, and I rebuked that blind demon, he said, and cast it out in the name of Jesus. See, it's not that people are demon-possessed, but these evil spirits have afflicted people's bodies, and so we have that's part of the gifts of the Spirit, discerning of spirits discerns the spirit of God and maybe the spirit of man or people or angels or demons. So he recognized that the Holy Spirit uh, prompted him and he took action accordingly. And he said, I still had hands over his eyes. In the name of Jesus, I want you to tell the congregation what time it is. And he said, he removed his hand. He saw the clock and he told him the correct time. The power of God he said, rain down on those people. When they saw that, they ran to the altar to receive Jesus Christ. See, the healing power of God demonstrates the glory of God and people run to Jesus when they see it. So God doesn't send sickness or disease. Uh, Satan is the one that deceives people into believing that it's not God's will to heal them. So if we're going to see people healed, we got to clearly understand it's absolutely essential that sickness and disease are not from God. Cancer, heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, we could go on and on, blindness, deafness, paralysis are the result of man's fall, the curse. And Jesus said, John 10:10, 10, 10, Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what sickness does. It steals, kills, destroys. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life that you might have it more abundantly. He's a deceiver. He deceives people into blaming God for their sickness, to believing it's not God's will for them to be healed, or God's using this sickness to bring glory. God does not send sickness or crippling diseases upon his children as a means of chastisement, and it's not his will that we be bound by sickness, eat up with cancer, suffer excruciating pain, it's his desire. We see this from the ministry of Jesus all the way through. And um, notice this, Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Then the next teaching, we're gonna talk about the covenant name Jehovah Rapha, the God who is the healer. In Exodus 20 through 25, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Something Brooke and I pray when we pray over our meals and together as a family, Lord, you bless our food and water and you take sickness away from the midst of us. So God is eternal. See, God is unchanging. And so we can know that it's God's will uh, to heal today. 2,000 years ago, he provided a way for men to be set free from the bondage of sin, sickness, and disease. He sent Jesus to pay the price, to save our souls, to heal our bodies, just as it's Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. By contrast, Jesus said, I've come that you may have, and I love how the Amplified says, have and enjoy life. Have it in abundance till it fulls, till, till, till it is full, till it overflows. That's, a, he, that's the God of glory. That's this good, wonderful God we serve. So we need to learn how to deal with sickness and disease like Jesus did. Never deal with it just in the natural realm. We are not in a natural conflict. Our battle is ultimately not against cancer, or diabetes, or blood pressure, or arthritis, but it's spiritual warfare. There are unclean spirits and spirits of infirmity that may be at the root cause of certain sicknesses and illness. So that's why we pray. Paul said, Ephesians 6, 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness 
in high places. So Jesus, just as Jesus recognized sickness as a bondage of Satan, he took authority over it. We need to recognize and discern by the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so important right now. We're praying and fasting at Harvest Family Church. And why it's so critical, you have to have a lifestyle of prayer and fasting uh, so that we can be sensitive to the Holy Spirit to discern the root cause of sickness and disease. So it's through the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, you have power over all the power of the enemy and uh, that we can speak to it, take authority over it and command it to go. And we also have the name of Jesus. I love this story by Dr. T.L. and Daisy Osborne. Had a powerful healing ministry and saw tens of thousands miraculously healed in over 70 nations. And I shared with you his book entitled Healing the Sick. It's a powerful manual that I encourage every single believer to read. And they learn the true source of sickness, how to deal with it. And their lives were transformed. They had saw the healing ministry and they saw people miraculously, genuinely healed by the power of God. And they just concluded, then sickness is of the devil and we have power over the devil in Jesus' name. We will call the sick, rebuke the devils that have bound and possessed their bodies with disease and cast out the evil spirits of infirmity. The diseases will die the sick will recover. Now, T.L. said this to Daisy. He said, we're going to announce a special healing uh, meeting tonight, Sunday night in our church. And we did. And they brought the sick from near and far. And we laid hands on them as they read that Jesus commissioned every believer to do. And they rebuked and cast out spirits of disease in Jesus' name. And we know the work was done. And they saw the sick recovered just as Jesus said they would. How I many you know God's the same yesterday, today, and forever? If we'll take him as his word, at his word, and act in faith that he's alive today and we can see the same powerful, miraculous results and wonderful healing testimonies and manifestations. They shared this example of a woman that was healed. In one of their crusades, she said this lady was brought in a wheelbarrow by other women and she had suffered a complete stroke of paralysis and was laying lifeless for four days and nights with, without eating. And so they said uh, they were, their, her eyes rolled back in her head and her body was dead except the beat of her heart, just a faint pulse beat. And so they said, I, T.L. said, I rebuked the demon that paralyzed her. I commanded it. Turn her loose. You come out of her. And I call with a loud voice. Open your eyes. You be made whole. And he said instantly she was healed. And in a few minutes she was on her feet. And she walked home sound and well. See hundreds of people in that area knew about that. He, the miraculous healing of this woman, Vita McKenzie, and the cause of her illness that was sent to kill and destroy her. But God delivered her. Her. See, in the power and authority of Jesus' name, we're commanded to follow Jesus' example when praying for the sick. We're to speak to the spirits of infirmity, death, dumb spirits, blind spirits, spirits causing cancer, diabetes, arthritis, pain, all types of sickness and disease. Rebuke them. Command them to go. I love this powerful story by Dr. John G. Lake, was a powerful man of God at the turn of the century as well, and God revealed the demonic forces behind a fever epidemic in South Africa that was killing hundreds, um, a spiritual battle fought and won. And I read here, in South Africa some years ago, a single night of fever epidemic struck the country for 350 miles. And I rode through that section of the country. I found men dead in their beds beside their wives, children dead in their beds alongside the living, whole families stricken, dying, some dead. In a single month, a fourth of the population of that district of, of all races died. We had to organize an army to dig graves, an army of men to make caskets. You could not buy enough wood in that section of the country to make caskets. So we buried them in a blanket without a, or, or without a blanket when it was necessary to save the blankets for the living. I had a man in my company who perhaps some of you know, and God appointed that man to pray as I've never found anyone else anointed to pray. For days he remained under a thorn tree and when I passed that way in the morning, I would hear his voice in prayer. And I returned in the evening, I would hear his voice in prayer. Many times I got a prepared meal and I carried it to him and aroused him long enough to get it, 
get him to eat it. And I said, brother, how is it? Are you getting through? He would reply, not yet. See, the old timers understood this concept of praying, praying in the spirit and praying in intercession until you receive a note of victory. And so he said, Mr. Lake, I feel today, if I had a little help in my faith, my spirit would go through to God. And I got on my knees beside him, joined my heart with his and voiced my prayer to God. And we prayed the spirit of the Lord overshadowed our souls. Presently, I found myself not kneeling under the tree, but moving gradually away from the tree, 50 or 100 feet, and my eyes gradually opened. And I witnessed such a scene as I'd never witnessed before. See, in prayer, his spiritual eyes were open. He saw the root cause. A multitude of demons like a flock of sheep. The spirit had come upon him also, and he rushed ahead of me, cursing that army of demons, and they were driven back to hell or the place they from from where they came. Beloved, the next morning we awoke, that epidemic of fever was gone. That is the power of divine healing, God destroying Satan. And I love that definition of divine healing. Divine healing is God destroying Satan. Jesus said, I've come to destroy the works of the devil and so as the Father has sent me, so send I you. I want you to pray with me right now. And if you have are dealing, battling with sickness in your body, we're going to take authority together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my friends watching, every family member represented by this broadcast. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity. We take authority over you, Satan. I rebuke sickness and disease, cancer, disease, weakness, infirmity, any malady, any haunting, recurring sickness that's hindering my friends and family that may be watching. In Jesus' name, we are healed. We pray the prayer of faith and we declare that we are the healed. Come on, just tell him, just thank him right now. You are the healed. I praise you and I thank you. Body, we command you to function as God created you to function. If it's a natural cause, whatever it may be, if there's unconfessed sin in your heart, just ask the Lord, cleanse me, forgive me. If there's fear that I'm allowing anxiety that's opening the door to the devil, I, re I come against that right now in Jesus' name. You close the door to the enemy in your own heart, in your own life. Put every sin under the blood. I thank you for the healing flow of Calvary. We thank you for the healing power of God. We thank you for it. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. I love you. Thank you for joining me in this session that we've entitled Authority Over Sickness. You have authority over sickness. You're going to live and enjoy divine health and walk in the power of God every day of your life. Goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. And we just thank you, Jesus, that you are our healer. I love you. God bless you. I'll see you right here next time uh, as we continue teaching the wonderful word of God.